This is the Dairy Brothers Tribecast, a podcast for diehard Cleveland Indians fans. Presented to you by WaitingForNextYear.com. Now, here are the hosts, Matt and Todd Derry. Hey, it's another installment of the Dairy Brothers Tribecast. Welcome, everybody, on a Thursday, June the 4th. Matt Derry, Todd Derry, on WaitingForNextYear.com, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, as we're brought to you by our friend Dr. Ben Hornstein, the Center for Advanced Dentistry, and the fine folks at Raising Cane's Chicken. Todd, can you believe this? We're literally in the first week of June, and the NHL and NBA seem to have their shit together, and baseball's nowhere to be found. It, it, it's absolutely pathetic. I mean, we've talked about this ad nauseum on this podcast about how whoever whoever's first is going to get all the eyeballs, and if there was any sport that needed all the eyeballs to come to them first, it is certainly Major League Baseball. And once again, they're so fucking greedy and can't get their acts together to come up with a plan. I mean, it's truly amazing how one league who has already gone through a major, I mean, I I guess 1994 now was a long time ago. But after 94, you'd think that, that the powers of being baseball would have learned their lesson, but apparently they haven't. 1990, the nine foe? (laughs) <laughs> the year I graduated high school. That's how long ago that was. Oh man, what about that you know, shot? Sweet, what about what about sweet. that shot? What about that shot you hit in high school? The three pointer. That was something else. Oh, against West Geauga. That's right. Anthony Lima's own West Geauga Wolverines. <laughs> Craig, Craig Lindell, another West Geauga Wolverine. Uh, Jeff Rieger's <laughs> Jeff Rieger's wife, Allison Rieger. That's a local Detroit uh, hit for you. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's. Uh, you know, one of my great athletic achievements, that's for sure, on the 0-21 team. That was, that was pretty awesome. The chagrin, <laughs> what about the old Chagrin Valley Conference? See, that that's TV's, where rivalries TV's were born. still around, but, like, the, the, the teams are different. Like, Perry is in the CBC. What? Yeah. That's brutal. You know who's a big Perry guy? Who? Friend of the show, it's Gene Winters. Big <laughs> <Perry>. <laughs> 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 I swear. Oh he knows man! Good people, man, I love. He always has me on when he does the when he does the uh, filling stuff. So shout out to you, Gene. But uh, seriously, going back nineteen nineteen ninety four, Leah and I, the misses, we're watching a. Uh, we're right in the middle of. We're almost done season two of All American on Netflix, starring Syracuse's own Tay Diggs. Went to, went to school with Tay. I uh, knew who. No one knew that he would be this big time, but. Um... You know, not that I knew him or anything, but I, we we knew who he was on campus for sure. So basically, the premise of the show, if you're not familiar, it's it, it's like nine hundred two one zero, surrounded by a high school football team, and and the big rivalry is Beverly versus Crenshaw, which is actually very funny. But in this a couple episodes ago that we watched in season two, there was the oh Tay Diggs playing the coach, Coach Billy Baker. He was going back to his high school reunion, and it was. Oh man, those were the days, and he was high school class of 1994. Yeah, <laughs> and we're... we were like, "Oh my God, we are old." Well, well, I mean, you know, when I sat through last weekend, my son graduating high school. I mean, it's uh, yeah, yeah. we're 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 getting old, that's for sure. But but, but Todd, I, you know, you're you're so right, and and I, I'm I'm finding it interesting in, in sort of following it, although I'm trying to stay off social media due to what's happening in the world right now, and. And really trying to focus on other things, but with with Major League Baseball, I, I, I'm it's it's stunning to me that you know I filled in on ninety two three the fan the Monday after Memorial Day, and that's now weeks ago where I and I, where I said on the show like they better get their act together and get moving here, and now we're sitting here where the players want to play one hundred fourteen games, the owners now are threatening forty, fifty, sixty games. Uh, it's like the you know Rob Manfred's running an H and H bagels right now. Hey, no bagel, no bagel, no bagel, no bagel. <laughs> you think these steam press is working over at the Manfred Mansion? I mean, um, it's a joke. You know, I, I think that what Major League Baseball wanted to do with coming back with 50 games was basically like, okay, we we know you don't want 80. We certainly don't want 114. So we'll low ball and then we'll come back to our 80 number. That's where I think that they went. But it sounds to me like, you know, according to the reports yesterday by, you know, uh, Ken Rosenthal and Jeff Passan was that, you know, MLB basically rejected the, the Players Association's 114-game uh, proposal and, and, and says they're not counter-offering. 
uh, uh, counter offering, which, you know, I think I, here's what I'll say. What I love to see, I want to see anything, whatever they come up with, I want to watch it. Right. And while I would prefer 80 games, a 50 game schedule where it's basically just a, a season within a season could be kind of cool. Cause every game really is going to matter. But on the other hand, I do not side with these owners at all the last proposal that they put together was like a total insult to the players in terms of the the finances. And when I hear the Ricketts family of all fucking people, Oh, we're going to hemorrhage money this year. Yeah. B O O H O O. Okay. I don't feel the least bit of sympathy for those fucks who stole my world series. (laughs) Okay. You want to settle down as as the great, listen, as the great coach Wayne Hissler once said, you want sympathy? You look between shit and syphilis in the dictionary. Exactly. I, I, I and, and the, you know the Ricketts family. It, you know, it, he, you know he's you know Tom Ricketts, the owner of the Cubs, brother is is the you know alleged racist governor of Nebraska. I mean, it's just it what? just. Oh, oh! I thought you were talking about the guy. He was the chairman of the. Uh, Republican National Finance Committee or something. He's the he's also the governor of Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What a family. I mean, it's just, you know, it, they can't get out of their own way. And with everything going on in the world and a global pandemic and now, uh, you know, hardcore racial tensions and, and, and everything that's happening and just the horrible uh, death of George Floyd and all of these things, you'd, fi- you'd figure that, that a, a big time business and corporation like Major League Baseball would go, what What do people need right now? Yes, we need to come together. Yes, we need better leadership at the top. All these things. But for Major League Baseball, right now, what what you know what that what it signifies to people in the summer is, you know, uh, Chevrolet, apple pie, and baseball. You know, and all. And, and I know fans can't go to games, but like you said, Todd, first man in. Both sides giving a little bit. And I was on the owner's side at the very beginning of this because I said, look, the players are acting ridiculous, and they got to remember that owners are going to lose a lot if people can't come through the turnstiles. But now, you know, the latest of that, that, that offer last week where, where they basically said, look, players making $22 million? No, we're not, even in an 81-game season, you're not going to make 11. You're going to make 7. They're not going from 22 no, to no, no, 7. No, no. It, was, it was Mike Trout making 39 was going to make 7. Right, right. Whatever it was. It was, abs- it was absurd. Absolutely I mean, absurd. And, and, and that's bad. And I know Scott Boris is running the show for the players, and I'm not a Tony Clark guy per se, but in this instance, uh, if you're going to be screwing over the players that have helped build what is there, um, you're making a big, big mistake. And and if they don't get back to this quickly and, and don't come to an agreement, um, they're going to lose a lot of fans. They're not going to lose maybe you and me, but the fringy fan, the casual fan, the fan that goes to a few games, those those seats, once they reopen next year, will be empty. And people will be talking about how slow the, the pace is and how uh, they don't miss it at all. And here's a sport like the NHL. That's the NHL's got their act together. Gary Bettman, the worst of the worst, booed every year when he when he presents the Stanley Cup. They've got their act together, and 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 the NHL could be gaining a lot of fans if they're the first ones back. And Major League Baseball still sitting on the sidelines. What a mistake! It's just so sad for guys like me and you who love baseball. I mean, and baseball first, you know. And again, and I know this is like nothing in pales in comparison to what's going on in this country, and we just badly need a distraction. And I'm no NBA guy, but at least the NBA today came out with their plan, and the players voted on it, and they're going to do this 22-team deal, eight regular season games, and then the playoffs in the Orlando bubble. And they did it all very quietly, and we've talked about this before, and I'll say it again, like, negotiating through the media is just the dumbest possible thing you can do. And nobody wins that way. It's just not smart. I I can't believe that a bunch of smart people can be this. So this ignorance, I mean, and and again, right. And I, and I understand that Rob Manfred represents the owners and, and he's their boss per se, when you're the commissioner, but to not come forward, you know, you got Bob Nightingale always sticking to his guns from USA today. And he's an excellent writer saying, you know, they're going to play baseball. But there's nobody at the very top that's running the sport, whether it's players or owners. People want to hear from the people at the top. 
We, we have this discussion every day politically, unfortunately. For Manfred to not come out, other than an interview with CNN a couple of weeks ago, and say, hey, everybody, we're going to get this done. Look people in the eye. Look at the camera. Whatever you got to do. And say, we're going to get this. Who's leading that sport right now? And so it's already bad enough that if Mike Trout walked down the street at Times Square in New York City or Frankie Lindor walked down Woodward Avenue in Detroit, no one would know who these people are. And that's on baseball already. So now you're going to throw in the chance for them to make people feel good after a pandemic and being stuck at home for two, three months, and you still can't get this done. And here's the NHL with their plan. NBA on Thursday came out came out with their plan officially. Board of uh, Governors ratified it, whatever it was. They're ready to go. And baseball still haggling and not even close to a deal. Um, pathetic. And who knows what this would mean for us in Cleveland. Uh, what would this mean that Paul Dolan, if he goes through an entire season, without anybody walking through his stadium and having to, uh, would he sell the team? Would he have to sell the team? I mean, this is, I, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's a very interesting thing. Um, check the text I sent you, by the way. Um, it's a very interesting situation with the Dolans because I don't know how a team who can claim that they don't make any money at any anyways and they're not in it for the money because they're, you know, whatever it is, and they continue to cut payroll. I don't know how, the, if they're getting no fans and no revenue, and, you know, they stayed very, very quiet, and you've heard nothing about how long they're going to pay their players for. You know, the Royals and the Tigers came out and said, we're going to, uh, it wasn't the Tigers, sorry, Royals and the Twins had come out and said, and the Marlins were actually one of the franchises that were also one of the first ones to do. We're going to pay our minor leaguers to the, uh, the, the $400 a week stipend that they normally get, through the end of August, which essentially is the minor league season, unless you make the playoffs and then you play a little bit in September. You've heard, you know, conspicuously absent from those conversations are the Indians. I know they just let off, uh, uh, let go the 1,000 plus seasonal workers. I mean, my, my girl Annie, my boy Josh, I mean, I know there are two of them uh, that, were, that were let go. Um, you know, so. I just, I don't know. And this brings me to the back to the product on the field. And this is not a conversation that I want to have, but here's the facts. If this organization is continuing to cut payroll year after year that we've seen the last three years, and this year, we the last two years, we've added, wanted them to add to, and buy, build around Frankie Lindor because you only have so many more years of them left and then they didn't do it, and now you're getting no revenue in? When and if they restart this year, if they don't make the playoffs or if they're sniffing nowhere near it and they slow start it, oh, yeah. Frankie's it'll, going to be traded. It'll be and a it'll be, going to be traded. It'll be a fire Brad sale. And is going to be traded. Oh, yeah. All of these guys who have one or two years left on the uh, 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 and making, you know, their arbitration eligible and going to get the big money, they're all going to be dealt. So yeah. Yeah. you're now looking at basically. They didn't want to gut the franchise. They wanted to try to rebuild on the fly, and I, I, I respect them for doing it. But it's not going to be financially feasible. We already know Frankie's gone one way or another, and I still maintain that they should have trained, uh, traded him. They, they were a year late on trading Kluber, and I think they're going to end up being a year late on trading Frankie, and nobody wants to see him go. But with no money coming in, you really you, you were never going to be able to afford him then. You're, you're, you're not going to want a $30 million arbitration player for one year. No way. Not, not, I mean, I want them, but they're not going to want to pay that. No. And then you got Clevenger right there a year behind and Hand also a year behind. So these guys are going to all be dealt. It's sad, too, because there's plenty of guys here that want to stay. It's a very good organization. We've talked about it before. They have a chance to, to win. They have a chance to win this year. I am against a 50-game season. I think that would be a sham. Uh, you got to be playing 70, 70 games minimum, in my opinion, to make it legitimate. Now, if they say it's 50, uh, will, will I sit it out as a fan? No. Uh, but, but, you can watch every inning for 50 straight games. Uh, of course. <laughs> but, 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 you know, our buddy Matt Maraconda, uh, uh, the pride of uh, Buffalo, friend New of the, York. Friend of the show. He, you know, he even said it. Maybe, maybe these owners want to sit this one out. Maybe they don't even want to pay anybody, do anything this year, take their small loss and be done. And that's sad. Because now, like you, we've said over and over again, it's an opportunity to, to be a feel-good story. To say, wow, we're back in the field. We're, we're going to be willing to put in the work and the time so that the fans can see something. 
you know, double, triple, quadruple headers on ESPN. A game at 1, a game at 4.30, a game at 7, and a game at 10.30. Daily. You know, a Marlins-Royals game on a random Thursday at 4, we'd all be glued to. But they don't get it. They're looking at one thing only, the books, and those books are closed. Open them up. You know, show us your tax returns. I mean, I, I know I know that everyone wants to see the books and they should open them up, and and and, and that's all well and good. You think the NFL owners have ever opened their books? Well, no, nobody's nope. going. Nobody's the going NBA to anyway. But books? I'm saying is, nope. right now they would get such an opportunity to go. We're we're being. Here's where we're arguing this. Here's where we think the players are way off, and we're going to show you why. But they don't do it, and, and that's where the commissioner is at fault. And you know, like I said, I don't I don't know anybody. Right now, saying, "Oh, though I feel so bad for those owners." Not at all. No one, no one. You know, when 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 these guys complain about the Boris contracts, nobody put a gun to these owners' heads and told some of these people who's a Boris client recently, Castellanos. Nobody told the Reds' ownership to to pay Nick what what, what Nick got, but they did. They did. So it's not like I Scott. Read, by the way, that that Bob is his name, Bob Castellanos, signed Nick Castellanos, the the owner of the Reds. He's the he is the has the lowest net worth of all the owners, like lower than I think Dolan, you're right. Which I did not, which I did not know. I I always thought that the Dolans were, you know, I know they're in the bottom too, but but here here were the Reds all last year making trades and adding, and uh, this year spending money in the off season because they felt like they had a you know a nice little window there with the. You know, rotation with Bauer and, and Luis Castillo and uh, yeah, they have a good team. Uh, Sunny and Sunny Gray, yeah. yeah, they do have a good team. They've always cared about their fans in Cincinnati. I, I know you go back to Marge Shot and some other things, but that's always been a good baseball town. You know, Reds fans are into it. You know, every game they got a post game show going. Uh, you know, they they they, they do it. Brantley, they do it Jeff right. Brantley on the post game show. Uh, yeah, I think he's one of the announcers. Right. Marty, I think it's Marty Brennan and. And Jeff Ram. Marty Marty retired. Last year was oh, his no, last Tom. year. Does Tom do it? This yeah, Tom does the TV. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. He does a uh, he does I a good job. Hear, by, speaking of TV, by the way, I they, they made the uh, someone put it out there. Today. Bruce Levine. It was, it was Bruce. Oh, ESPN 1000's own Bruce Levine. I heard that he the the Indians. Well, not the Indians, but all teams will be radio because this was the conversation I think we had with Zach Miser when he was on a couple weeks ago. All these teams are going to have their radio and TV for both home and road, so you know you will get to see. Yeah, but they're not. Uh, they're not. They're not going to the games. The road games. No, they're they're, doing, they're right. They're staying home for the road games. They're staying home, but they're doing it. You, you get the announcers. Yeah. Right. Right. They're going to do the games, but Hammy, Rosie, yeah. right, Underwood, and that crew will will be. They'll be either at the stadium, like so. If the Tribe's playing in Chicago against the White Sox. The Hamilton or Rosenhaus might be in a studio somewhere, or they could be in a booth at Jacobs uh, Progressive Field with monitors broadcasting from there. That's interesting. Yeah, they're not going to go on the road. They're trying to limit the, the right. amount of travel party. Which and I get. so, you know, what would suck is if, if certainly the Indians get a win and there's a hero. Uh, you know, you know, you know, let's say Jose hits. How do you get? Right, right. There's not. I don't think there's going to be a post game interview. Right. How do you get that? Because normally there's someone down on the field, you know, giving them the headphones. Right, right. right. That's how it works. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it kind of does uh, suck. All right, Matt and Todd Derry here, Derry Brothers Tribe Cast, on a, a Thursday, early June, June 4th. W- what's going on at the Center for Advanced Dentistry? Uh, ben Hornstein back in business? Taking care of his patients, being extra safe, being funny. Trying to trying to put you at ease. Not only is he doing all the things that he does besides cleaning teeth, but you know he is such a good man, and he really, really during this period, I I, I know him personally. He, he was so distraught because he couldn't take care of his patients, and he wanted to do everything he could to be as safe as he possibly can. I would feel I have an appointment coming up for a cleaning. In uh, the, uh, at the beginning of July, and nice. I am happy to go in. And listen, I, give Doctor Ben all your money, okay? 
If anybody deserves it, it's him. He's a great man. You don't, you don't leave the house, so that, that, that says something. Well, I, 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 I've loosened up. That's a, I, I've loosened up. Let's put it that way. I, I've gone to the store. I, wear my, I, I go out in public now as long as I'm wearing a mask. I'm not eating at restaurants, but I will go inside to Hyman's and pick up some grub if I need to. I mean, it's not, you know... <laughs> Let's get back to Dr. Ben. <laughs> Anyways, Dr. Ben and the Center for Advanced Dentistry, he's right here uh, on Orange Place off of Chagrin Boulevard. Check him out at cfad.net or on Twitter at CFAD Beachwood. Truly, I know this was a time where a lot of people probably just had dentist appointments and canceled or they didn't have it or you know they've let their dental... Uh, issues go by the wayside. If there's a guy who can take care of all that for you, it is Dr. Ben and his team at the Center for Advanced Dentistry. So, again, check them out at, uh, at cfad.net or uh, on Twitter at cfad, CFAD Beachwood. And um, I promise you, you will not be disappointed and he'll take great care of you because he really, truly cares a ton about his patients. And about safety, might I add. Oh, no question about it, and it's uh, it's, it's certainly been a tough time, and and um, people people are getting back to work, people are getting back to normalcy as best they can. Hopefully, still socially distanced, and, and like you said, wearing the masks and everything else. But uh, Doctor Ben is he's a uh, he's a trooper, man. He's he's fantastic, and check out the folks at the uh, Center for Advanced Dentistry. I, I was making a point earlier. We were talking about baseball trying to come back. Here's the NBA approving a 22-team format, um, draft lottery date, August 25th, draft, October 15th, free agency, October 18th, targeting next season to start December 1st. I mean, they're organized because Adam Silver knows what he's doing. And I know that baseball's labor um, deal ends after next season, and so that's part of where this posturing is coming from, but my goodness, like... You've seen these other sports, man. They got their they got their act together. It's it's unbel- I, I, I'm I'm dumbfounded that we're sitting here still having this discussion. Well, like you said, lack of leadership at the top. I mean, it's that's that's what it comes down to. It's I, I think it's absurd. I mean, <laughs> truly. But the thing is, they're going to miss a golden opportunity. Number one, number two. If they don't play, they are going. I, I'm not going to say that it's going to be on par with hockey. But they're already a distant third behind the NFL and the NBA. It's going to fall even further. We, you and I have discussed this many times. We're 44 and 47, and I still feel like we're youngish baseball fans. You know? Um, if you don't, it's so regionalized. So if you don't live in a major league city, like they're, like when, when, when you don't live in an NFL city, like let's say you live in Shreveport, Louisiana, right? You're either a Cowboys fan or a Saints fan because you watch the NFL. If you live in, in Lincoln, Nebraska, you're probably a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Like, talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's just how it is. I mean, like, I, when I went to school in Kansas, I met a ton of people from western Kansas or from, you know, like I said, Nebraska or Iowa. And, you know, people from Iowa were Cubs fans. You, you know, they because... Well, they had the Triple H team, yeah. The Triple A team, but they watch WGN and 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 so. But you just, unless it's a big market team like the Yankees or the Cubs, you're how many how many rando Indians fans are there that don't live in Cleveland, right? Unless you're Andrew Siciliano and your grandmother, you know, grew up, raised you as an Indians fan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't, you just don't get that. So it's it's going to be a, it, it's already bad enough. It's going to be an even bigger problem if they just let this go and. I, you know, you said this earlier. Part of me believes that half of these owners are like, "Screw this, man! Let's just not play. We have we have no deal in in place, anyways. If they don't play, it's going to cost us less than if they do play with no fans. We might as well just say screw it. And maybe maybe some of these guys are negotiating in bad faith. Maybe they are looking for some sort of a quote unquote market correction or a salary cap, which they're never going to get. The sport's in real trouble, and it saddens me. That's why you got to play now. That's why you got to get the guys out there. That's why you have to show the fans that you care. Because, like you said, if they just scratch this season and say it didn't work out, but we'll be back next year, then you're talking about having to go into a lame duck labor season of 2021. 
And uh, there's no guarantee that, that, that whatever deal you came up with, that, that people would, would applaud. And that would, to me, force, you know, it, it's, too, it's too bad. And I don't know how many times we've talked about it. And it is the Derry Brothers tribe cast. We're talking about the Cleveland Indians. But this franchise would be at a real crossroads, uh, whether it was ownership, like you said, trying to level the playing field, the Lindor stuff, uh, the, the payroll um, you already you already are one of the worst attendance teams in the league. Now the TV ratings are really good. Well, yeah, because the team's exciting and they're they're willing to win. But you know, you know what 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 would Tito Francona do? You know what? I'm not saying he would he say ah oh, the hell with it. I'm done. I, I doubt it. He loves working for this franchise. He loves the people that he works for. There's some good people there. But a lot of those fans that are right there already. Is there, is there good people on both sides? <laughs> oh God. Sorry, go ahead. <sighs> to, uh, uh, maybe Dolan should do a photo op and walk across the street. But, you know, I, I mean, it just makes no sense at all that there's a popular team, a fun team in town. They're clearly number three behind the, the Browns. Of course, it's number one. And probably the Cavs because the Cavs are a part of a, 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 a league that, that seems to get it and seems to know how to market to its fans. You know, that Cavs product going into this season, looked at the, look at that roster. It was a joke. But they still found a way to have people in the seats. But the Indians have a better roster and more exciting talent, but yet there's that group that just says, I'm not buying tickets. The owner's cheap. We're going to lose Lindor. Same old, you know, it, 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 it sucks. I will, I will never understand why, I mean, first of all, the NBA, it's like if you're a bad NBA team, it's the dead of winter in Cleveland. Who wants to go downtown when it's 25 degrees? At least if the Indians are bad, it's the summer and you're outside if you want to go see a sporting event, right? I mean, I, I, I mean, listen, I'm a diehard and you know I go to like 50 games a year, but a lot of times I just go just to go because like, hey, it's outside. I take the kids. It's an activity. And, it's, and baseball seats are a lot cheaper than NBA seats. Right. Which may in the lower bowl for in, in, at, at, between the baskets for less than two hundred bucks, and that's in Cleveland. Imagine you look, imagine you're a Lakers fan. How much those tickets must cost? But you've talked to plenty of people that will tell you whether the Cavs are good or not, whether they, they were stupid to, to to trade for Andre Drummond and absorb a thirty million dollar contract for next year. Whether that is the case, if you go to the Rocket Field House or Rocket Mortgage Field House, the Q, whatever. You have a good time. You know, you're entertained. It's a fast-paced game. You saw an alley-oop. You saw a 360. You saw a bunch of threes. There was music playing. That's a big issue that baseball people just refuse to. You know, I'm all for old-school baseball. I like the game itself the way it is. Sometimes I go to Tribe Tigers here in Detroit, and I get ticked off when they're doing all these things in between innings. But you know what? They're at least I get that they're trying to market it a little bit and have some fun. That will be exposed even more. If they sit out this year, because people are going, to go, you know what? It's slow. It's boring. I don't have the time. I don't have the, uh, um, um, you know, my my brain isn't. It, 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 I'm not ready to sit and function for three hours and, and focus on a game. I want to walk around the concourse. I want to do something else, or I just won't go. And that's where baseball's got to come up with some things. But the basics of just having a season are in serious trouble, and that's uh, shame on them, man. That's that's brutal. I hate- yeah, I hate that we're having this conversation. I mean, it's June, such a downer. We should we we should be discussing, uh, you know, how come Daniel Johnson hasn't been called up from AAA yet? You know, like th- that, those are the conversations I want to have. I, I, you know, I want to talk about uh, Jeffrey Rodriguez and if he would be a great weapon in the pen. You know, without Class A, maybe he can be the guy who can come in and throw hard. I mean, th- those are the conversations I wish we were having. It's it's. It's such a shame, man. I finished Zach Meisel's book, by the way. Everybody should go get it. Free plug here, but it was good. Go get it when Cleveland Rock. It was great. I mean, if you, you and I, again, and I know I said this before in a previous pod, but you and I are, you know, that's wheelhouse stuff for us. And you were covering the team in 1995, and I was going to a million games in 1995. <laughs> so, I mean, it was it was prime time. That was our first great team, and you just. I've learned a lot about the players themselves as people and how they worked as a group. And it, it gave me, I'll, I'll tell you one person who I gained more respect for and have a new appreciation for. And you know, I've bashed him for years, but Mike Hargrove, I got to give him credit. 
I, I've always said that he he anybody could have you know managed those teams to yeah. the World Series, but I think and Zach said this on on uh, our pod and and uh, it really after you read the book it's true. He didn't have to you know he he let these guys be themselves and he didn't stand in their way and he wasn't he was just he was really truly. A, a player's manager and a guy that these guys respected at that time. And I think because he had been with the, with so many of them, I mean, you forget, like, p- people don't remember that there was baseball before James Field. But, like, you know, Albert Bell and Carlos Baerga, these guys were on the team, and you know, at Loft, and these guys were playing in 93. Yeah, in, in, the, in the old stadium. So, yeah, so when Grover took over, he, he, you know, matured these guys to get to that point, and... You know, I, I, I really respect what he did. You know, the later years of Hargrove, not so much, but at least 94, 95, 96, although I will never forgive him from bringing Mesa out for a fourth inning in game four of the 96 <laughs> against, uh, against Baltimore. But, uh, yeah, that's another story for another day. But, yeah, the, the book's great. Everyone go get it. When Cleveland rocked, and I and I, 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 got, I read it on my uh, Kindle, it was Easy, quick read for all Tribe fans, especially those who, uh, you know, if, if you're young and you don't remember the 95 Tribe, you just hear the stories, th- this is the book for you to really gain a true appreciation for just how great it was down there. No, it was. It was so much fun. There were so many lovable characters, and um, the team had it all, man. It's just it's such a shame that, especially 95, 97, that that, uh, that group could not have brought home at least just one championship. It's all we wanted. You know, you, you sit back and you talk to people and you really have, have done a lot of self-reflection or even just, you know, time with your family because of the of the pandemic and everything else. And you're like, you know, I sit back sometimes and be like, what do, what do I want? You know, I got, I got knock on wood, healthy family and, and things are good and I'm still working and you're still working and, you know, so many people out of work. And it's like, it always comes back to the same thing. <laughs> you know, it's, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to have a cabin down in Tennessee or something like that one day, or maybe even you know, northern Michigan or something cool. But I just want this team to win one championship. I just want one. That's all I want, you know. And you tell people I that sometimes, and they're like, "What? They don't get. They don't get it. Just one, man. That's all I want." That's why, you know, in '97 when we, they they didn't finish, it was like it took them 19 years to get back to the World Series. And when you get up 3-1, you got to finish. You just got to finish. And I don't, you know, it's, who knows when they'll get back. I mean, listen, this was, I, I think it was Jason Stark who said it. I think it was Jason Stark. So this would be the year that the Indians would probably win the World Series, right? Like, and it, and it would be like, like this is like one of these random, the most random year of random years. This would be the time for the Indians to actually win it. Well, I know. Well, there's there's still that chance, but they got to get their act together and uh, end up playing. Yep. All right, man. Well, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, everybody says, well, this is a big week. This is a big week. We've been saying this has been a big week for Major League Baseball for the last couple of weeks, but they're running out of time. You know, they sure are. If real, they want to start in July, they better get their act together in the next in the next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, we've been brought to you by our friends at Raising Cane's. Great chicken, by the way. Have you been lately? I tried to get everyone to go the other day, but one of our neighbors was randomly going to get something else, and she said that she would get it for the kids, so we didn't end up going. But I am planning on going this weekend. Nice. Out in, uh, in Brooklyn, out by the airport, Tiedemann Road, man. Hey, doesn't get any better. Because I, I do still have dipping sauce in my refrigerator, though. See? When you keep the sauce, that you it means you know the place is good. Hell yeah. And, of course, our buddy, uh, Dr. Ben Hornstein at the Center for Advanced Dentistry. All right, dude, we'll uh, we'll see what happens, and hopefully we'll be talking about a season very soon. Yep, from, from your lips to you-know-whose ears. <laughs> All, right. All right, this has been another installment of the Dairy Brothers Tribecast. Waitingfornextyear.com is where you find us. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, follow us as well there. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.